Hey everybody, Jim here with another quick pickups video. Um, as I said, I'm basically hoarding right now, but uh, there are a few really cool things that I thought were kind of stand out, and I'm going to show them to you right now. So let's check it okay, out. Okay, so uh, I'm starting with the uh, cornerstone to any uh, good video game pickup video, and that's books, um, right? Because that's what you came for. You wanted to see some books. Um, lately I've been going around a lot of hard offs and in their game sections or at least very near their game sections they'll pretty much always have a section of strategy guides and uh, other game related books and looking in there I found some really really cool uh, books in there that were a dollar a piece so I started buying up uh, quite a few of them uh, this is just four that I found recently that were pretty cool this first one I thought was really cool. It's actually not a strategy guide. It is a Contra Choose Your Own Adventure novel. So as you're reading through it and you're um, you know, given some options to choose from, you know, you can choose and it'll tell you to go to, you know, skip to this page to see the results of your choice. And it's a game book Contra thing. And it's pretty cool, the Contra Choose Your Own Adventure Book. Pretty cool. I got a Rockman X2 Strategy Guide. This is really cool. Um, I know the original Mega Man X like the back of my hand. And Mega Man X4 for the most part. But 2 and 3 were the, the two that I kind of missed out on at the time. Um, this really awesome book tells you the location of every heart, every energy tank, every upgrade capsule, all that good stuff. Um, so, and plus I love Mega Man. I'll buy anything with Mega Man on it. So there you go, Rockman X2 Strategy Guide. Here's a nice one, a thin one. Um, it is the uh, Silent Hill Official Guide, which is not really a totally in-depth guide. As you can see, it's kind of thin. It does give you um, basic rundown of characters, enemies, and maps, and things like that, and some, you know, uh, convenient stuff to know so it is pretty cool Silent Hill and I do really love that series and this one I really just loved the cover art for this one it is a strategy guide for Parasite Eve 2 um, and I really love this uh, artwork here with Aya really cool um, the Parasite Eve games uh, I really like a lot um, I really like the character of Aya Brea I've never played the third game in this series I actually don't even recall the name right now um, but I heard they basically kind of stripped down the character of Aya to being something of a trope. In the first two games, she's really headstrong and intelligent and a uh, capable person. And from what I understand, the third game, they kind of make a mockery of her character. So I'm not really in a big hurry to play that. Um, but this, the Parasite Eve 2 strategy guide. A nice thick guide with a lot of useful information in it and character profiles and all that good stuff. A lot of nice artwork in there. And again, just badass cover. Parasite Eve 2. And those are some awesome gaming books that I've picked up recently. Alright, so here I have some PlayStation games that I picked up recently. Some pretty interesting uh, titles here. This first one is King of Fighters Kyo. And what this is, is a King of Fighters RPG because apparently that's what people were just demanding from SNK. We love these 2D fighters, but give us an RPG. Um, so it, it's pretty cool. It's an RPG featuring the characters from the King of Fighters games. Um, it has kind of an interesting, um, like every attack and movement you choose uses up a certain amount of energy. And so with turns you can build up energy or do these certain attacks that use lesser energy but are less likely to hit and this, that, and the other thing. It's pretty cool. It's not a typical turn-based RPG. You basically pick each move you're going to do each round and then you kind of watch it play out. And it's pretty fun. I love the King of Fighters series and this is a really interesting play. Uh, King of Fighters Kyo. Really cool. Um, this one, one of the, officially now one of the strangest games in my collection. It's called Twin Goddesses. 
and it's a fighting game. It's, you know, with digitized characters. You have two digitized human actresses uh, playing these two separate goddesses, and then the rest of the characters in the game are, like, just cartoon characters digitized into the game. So you'll have these two human women fighting these cartoon character uh, monsters, basically. Um, just a really weird game, just the intro and everything explains that these two young women are taken away from this planet as it's being conquered by this evil sorceress. And when they come of age, they're now these like twin goddesses and they're badass and have powers now. Um, really weird game. Um, if you can find video of it on YouTube, check it out. Twin Goddesses for the PlayStation. Really weird one. Uh, speaking of weird, here I have a copy of Cooking Fighter. Cooking Fighter. Um, so you're these chefs and you want all the best ingredients for your food, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna fight for them. So you're basically, it's top-down view, you have your character and the opponent, and you can attack each other as you run around the field trying to collect all the ingredients for whatever dish uh, you want to make. So you can collect a few ingredients, slap together an awesome dish, and then go trying to collect more ingredients. And basically at the end of the fight, whoever made all the best food by collecting all the best ingredients and beating out the other person is the winner. Um, interesting, strange, and surprisingly a lot of fun cooking fighter. Pretty cool. And then a couple of things that uh, aren't really so strange, I guess. Uh, I got the Street Fighter collection, which honestly isn't much of a collection. It's Super Street Fighter 2 and Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo on one disc, and on the other disc it's Street Fighter Zero 2. Um, all games I have individually, and you know, you think when you get something called a Street Fighter collection, there'd be like a lot of games in it, but only the three games. Um, so not a super awesome collection, but it was like $5 and it was something I would have liked to have had in my collection. So here it is, Street Fighter Collection. And this last game, a game in a series I really like now that I'm actually played the first one and then I played the second one a long time ago. I'm into this series now. Um, this game is called Clock Tower Ghost Head. Um, I believe this came out in the States as Clock Tower 2. Um, this one, totally separate storyline from the first two games. It takes place in Japan. Um, different characters and settings. Still really, really creepy. Um, these games, for my money, might possibly be the like scariest, like creepiest games I've ever played. More so even than the Silent Hill games. These, really, especially when I'm playing them at night with the lights out, they really do actually kind of scare me and creep me out. I'm actually kind of nervous about, you know, interacting with this certain object or something, just anticipating what's going to happen. So, um, Clock Tower Ghost Head. Um, if you've never played a Clock Tower game and you do like horror games, definitely check the series out. It's, it's one of the best um, in the horror genre, period. Uh, I love them. And uh, those are... Uh, some PlayStation games I got recently. So, I actually only got two Mega Drive games um, recently, but there are two really good ones. Uh, the first one is Rolling Thunder 2. Um, the original Rolling Thunder, I guess, was a pretty popular arcade game made by Namco. This second one, it's fun. They're just like action shooters. Um, basically, the screen, well, it doesn't always scroll to the right, but typically it does. You walk to the right, you kill bad guys, you, you know, duck behind cover, what have you. There are doors everywhere and you can go into the, those doors and get extra ammo and bonus weapons and points and stuff like that. And it's a lot of fun just jumping around the levels and shooting all the villains and things. I actually had quite a lot of fun with Rolling Thunder 2. That's a good one. And then this one, here in Japan it's called X Ranza. In the United States it's called Ranger X. And it's really good. You play this um, awesome mech that can like fly around and blast everything to hell and back. And you've got this cool like little cyber cycle thing that you can lower yourself onto. It, it follows your movements as you move around the level. It'll move with you, but you can land on it and then kind of like connect with it. And then now you're 
you and the cycle are one entity, and it auto tracks your um, uh, enemies, so it has a lock-on feature. Um, very cool game, um, level design and stuff, uh, really cool, very difficult though. Um, I am really enjoying X Ronza or Ranger X. Um, if you've never tried this one, uh, do check it out, it's pretty cool. And those are two awesome Mega Drive games. Okay, so I got four PC Engine titles, uh, well I got more than four, but these are the four that are, you know, kind of like the ones I've been playing the most uh, recently. This first one, let me read the full title, it's uh, Niketsu Koko Dodgeball Boo Soccer CD Hint. So uh, basically that kind of translates into Niketsu High School Dodgeball Club Soccer Edition CD or Soccer CD Edition. Um, this is the PC Engine CD version of Nintendo World Cup. Um, really cool. It's in the Kunio Kun series, which is actually one of my favorite gaming series of all time. And it's really cool because this comes with a lot of cool cutscenes in it uh, at the start of the game. Kind of advances the story. Basically, the story of this game is all the characters from Super Dodgeball um, in the original version, the Japanese version, are part of the Dodgeball Club at Niketsu High School. And so after the events of that game where they win the world championship at dodgeball, the manager of the soccer team at their school comes to them thinking that um, maybe they could help um, turn the soccer club into a winning club as well. And so Kunio and all his friends from the dodgeball club join the soccer team and then you have this game. They're trying to beat out all the other teams uh, in Japan, I guess. Thank you. Um, so it, that's what it is. It's Nintendo World Cup for the PC Engine CD. It's got uh, upgraded graphics, uh, greatly upgraded music, and some animated cutscenes. It's a lot of fun. And then these three games I got all at the same time. They were all about a few bucks a piece. It's a trilogy of Ranma One Half games, which is um, a really popular series, or at least it once was a really popular series of manga and anime. Um, Ranma is a central character. He's a guy. If he gets splashed with cold water, he turns into a girl. Hot water, he changes back to a guy again. Um, that opens the door for a lot of really funny situations. In one of these games, in particular, uh, which one is it? I think it's uh, this one actually. Um, the opening cutscene has Ranma at a bathhouse, and there's a, a perverted old man there that splashes him with cold water to turn him into a girl. And so, of course, he's a guy when he's in there, so he doesn't have a, you know, a top on or anything. So the first stage of the game, you're playing as a topless female Ranma fighting off the perverted old man. And it's just funny, and it's a lot of fun. Um, this one's more or less a fighting game. This one is essentially like a visual novel. And this one is more of like a side-scrolling beat-em-up slash platformer. Um, kind of like the old Fist of the North Star games. So all three of them play a bit differently, but uh, they're all a lot of fun, they have a lot of great music, uh, a lot of awesome cutscenes, as you would expect from a PC Engine CD, and for the most part they're all really fun. Um, the Ranma One Half trilogy of games on the PC Engine CD, uh, really cool, and um, yeah, those are some PC Engine CD games I picked up recently. Okay, so Famicom and some Super Famicom games. This first game, really awesome, Capcom goodness. It's Mighty Final Fight, which is kind of like the chibi 8-bit version of Final Fight. You have your three selectable characters, Cody, Hagger, and Guy. Unfortunately, there's still no two-player in this, um, but it's a lot of fun. All the characters are kind of like the super deformed versions. They're little guys with big heads. Um, it's just a fun 8-bit beat-em-up. Mighty Final Fight. <clears throat> this next game, Torneko do Daibouken. Um, this is the, well, the character of Torneko, oh, I forget what the uh, name is in Dragon, he, he first appears in Dragon Quest 4, and he's in Dragon Warrior 4, obviously, and I forget the name that they gave him in English, but in Japanese his name is Torneko. And so I guess he was a popular enough character in Dragon Quest IV that he actually got his own series of games. 
And this is the first game in that series. It's Torneko no Daiboken. And then I think the subtitle is uh, Fushigi no Dungeon or something, which is like Mysterious Dungeon. Basically, it's a dungeon crawler uh, action RPG and all the dungeons are randomly generated and it's just a lot of fun. You go through the dungeons as this character uh, killing monsters and trying to collect treasure and that's it. It's just an expansion on the Dragon Quest universe and I like it a lot. Torneko no Daiboken. This next one, let me read the title correctly. It's Twinby Rainbow Bell Adventure. And what it is, is it's Twinby, which is typically top-down shoot-em-ups made by Konami, turned into an action platformer where you're running through the levels and in a lot of instances at really high speed. I was actually kind of impressed at how fast, <coughs> excuse me, at how fast you move through some of the levels. It's almost like blast uh, processing levels of speed, but it's just fun colorful platformer featuring the ships from the Twin B series of shoot 'em ups really cool and then this last game Kunio Kun no Dodgeball Dayo it's a sequel to Super Dodgeball on the NES again it's another Kunio Kun game are you sensing a pattern here I really like this uh, series of games because it really covers a whole lot of different genres I mean in this series the Kunio Kun series, there are beat em ups, there's soccer, dodgeball, hockey, um, one on one fighting, track and field. There's just so much in this series. So, this is basically expanding on the Super Dodgeball gameplay style. So, it's basically the same exact setup, just the stages. There's some stage hazards and things like that. And you can actually build your own dodgeball team in this game, pick which characters you want in it. And as you play and win games, you can level those characters up and give them more health and more power in their throws, all kinds of stuff. So a lot of uh, really fun to be had with um, Kunio Kun no Dodgeball Dio. Really great game for the Super Famicom. And those are some awesome Nintendo games I picked up recently. All right, last but not least, I have two PS2 games and one of them came with a soundtrack. This first game, is Common Rider and Climax Heroes. Common Rider Climax Heroes. Basically, it's a 3D fighting game where you can choose from a whole bunch of different iterations of Common Rider. It's a really popular series of kind of like uh, action, almost Power Rangers esque um, uh, TV shows uh, here in Japan. I think some of them might have made it over to the United States. I'm not sure. Um, but so in here you play as a, you can choose from a lot of different versions of Common Rider and then they go at it. Um, there's a story mode and there's actually card collecting in this game. You can collect various kinds of cards. Um, that's pretty cool but really I just enjoy playing. You can transform and you can do some really crazy awesome looking super moves in this game. Really good game. It was released in 2009 so an extremely late release for the PlayStation 2. I don't know when they stopped releasing games for the PS2, um, but yeah, 2009 uh, seems quite late to be releasing games for uh, a system that came out in 2000, but it is still pretty cool. Uh, Kamen Rider Climax Heroes, and then this game, uh, really awesome series of 2D fighters that uh, sadly I don't think ever made it outside of Japan. Uh, this game is Melty Blood Actress Again. From what I understand, the Melty Blood games are based on what was originally kind of like visual novel games for the PC, and then they kind of took those characters, turned it into a 2D fighter, and it became pretty damn popular in the arcades. I've seen these quite a few uh, cabinets for these uh, Melty Blood games in arcades, and then they got some ports to the PS2. This game was also released in 2009. Um, I assume at the time. Um, just print these on some DVDs and, and get them out. There's already God knows how many PlayStation 2s in homes. Um, and seeing as how this game was fairly popular in the arcades, seems like a good idea. Might sell pretty good. So, really good um, series of 2D fighters. And when I bought it, it actually came with this really cool uh, two disc soundtrack. Um, some decent music in these Melty Blood games. So, I was 
really happy to be able to pick this up. Um, Melty Blood, uh, maybe look up some video on this too if you've never heard of these games before. Uh, really cool, really fun, and some really ridiculous combos to be had in these games. Really very cool. And so that's it for the PS2 games, and that's it for uh, this pickups video. Um, as always, do let me know in the comments uh, if you would like to see any of these games. Uh, I'll gladly do a viewer request video. I'm actually waiting on a new capture card to come in the mail. My old one kind of uh, went kaput. So I'm waiting on a new one, so as soon as I get it, I can start putting up some more gameplay and stuff like that. So do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see anything uh, featured in this video. And with that being said, uh, everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff. I shall see you next time. Take care.